Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Other open discussion? Councilor Staggers. Yes, <clears throat> I uh, uh, was wondering if we could get some more information uh, about these uh, two liens uh, placed against the city. Um, this is the first time um, I've ever encountered this happening to the city itself, and so I'm particularly interested, in, uh, and I'm sure my colleagues too are. And um, to answer those questions, I know City Attorney Dave Fifley is prepared. So, um, Mr. Fifley. Thank you, Councillor Karski. Uh, Councillor Staggers, uh, this is a unique lien that is filed not against any building or property, but it's only on the account itself. So it's a lien on proceeds, not on any particular building. Uh, we provided the council through Tracy Turback's memo to you that's on SIRE, as well as all the supporting documentation regarding this lien. It's there both for uh, your benefit and also public benefit in terms of full transparency of what this item is. This is an item where the uh, architect uh, was asked to certify that work being performed on the event center was conforming with contract documents. The architect did not certify that that work, and this is involving the metal panels, mm -hmm. that that work was conforming to the contract documents. Uh, Mortensen has therefore not been paid, and in turn, Dawson is their subcontractor, and they have not been paid. So Dawson uh, notified, did the statutory requirement to place this lien on the proceeds or on the, the event center account. So it is not, again, on the building. Uh, we receive about one of these per year on average. Uh, the three others that I'm familiar with, uh, one of them resolved itself like the next day. So the subcontractor released the lien immediately. The other two did go to you, uh, the council as well. We provided all the same documentation that we did to you now. Those other three all resolved themselves at some point. And again, uh, we appreciate that you uh, authorized us to, to hire a, a unique facilitator mediator. We are still hopeful that this issue will be resolved. And again, this is just one more part of that big picture. How, how much money are we talking about? Uh, it's right in the documents that are on SIRE. I, it's over $400,000. I don't have the exact figure in front of me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I guess I'm wondering also, why is the city um, have this lien against these proceeds? I mean, you mentioned it's Mortensen. Uh, why isn't Mortensen just totally uh, responsible for this? Well, you're right, Councillor Saggers. The contract is, be you know, for, uh, for the metal panels is between Mortensen and Dawson, and we are not involved on that other than the payments once the architect certifies it. But this is a unique uh, chapter in the state law that allows the subcontractor to not put a lien on our building, but to put a lien on the proceeds or the money. So it's just, it's a unique remedy provided by state law that they've availed themselves of. Mm -hmm. Um, also, too, it's um, this is a question not exactly uh, about the um, uh, lien, but we have city inspectors, and was there a city inspector that ever approved the siding that was put on the uh, uh, event center? Not that I'm aware of, Councillor. Again, this is an, if you the application for payment is included in the documents that are on SIRE, and it specifically talks about the architect issuing that. They're the design team mm -hmm. in terms of are these metal panels conforming to the design that was done. So that wouldn't be something a city inspector would do in terms of are they complying with electrical code and plumbing code. This is something unique. So, and um, do you have any idea? Uh, when the um, architect realized that things were kind of a miss here? I don't have a timeline memorized, Councillor. I'm not exactly sure. But as we've notified you in the past and talked about it in this room, uh, certainly last May we certainly noticed that there was a problem with the metal panels. We notified both the architect and Mortensen of that issue. And this is just all flowing from, from that notice. Uh, as you mentioned, last May we became, the city became first aware of this about eight months ago. Um, 
Is this going to be resolved in the very near future? Does it look like that or any insight as to what's going to be happening? I think things are moving along well, Counselor, and we hope it's resolved expeditiously and bluntly very soon. Um, in terms of an exact timeline, I can't give you that today. Any other questions from other counselors before Counselor Staggers? Yeah. Counselor Jameson? I was just going to fill in one of the blanks there that uh, Counselor Staggers had asked about the dollar amounts. I just happened to have them handy. It was $87,000 and some change for the uh, convention center that was left unpaid, and the uh, event center has 400, <coughs> 452000 left unpaid mm -hmm. of, a, of what was, I think, a $2.5 million project for the siting. So just to give you proportions. Other counselors? Councilor Staggers, do you have other questions? Um, yeah, I have other questions, but I, I don't think they're appropriate for uh, Dave Fifely. Um, public works, maybe, I don't know. Maybe. I'll, I don't know. Mr. Cotter, um, Councilor Staggers has some questions. He didn't know if they'd be appropriate for you. Um, you want to take a shot and see if it is? <laughs> I apologize. I was uh, having a conversation offline. What's the question? <coughs> well, uh, one question that um, uh, I wondered about is the formal occupancy permit. I assume that the city issued a formal occupancy permit. Right. That's a, that's a formal process through building services once, once uh, it meets its um, certain standards for uh, fire prevention and 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 alarm systems, things of that nature. So that would be in Mike Cooper's area. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's really. Thank you, Counselor. Really okay. Very good. Mm -hmm. Any other open discussion? <coughs> Counselor Anderson. Bart. <laughs> Since we have you here today, might as well get a little utilization um, on the consent agenda. I just noticed there was a tree trimming, electric light. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are we trimming? What trees? Where? Uh, so part of our network of overlying power, just like Excel does, you always want to proactively uh, take an area and make sure you're cutting those trees back so that they don't uh, have any conductors like we had with all the ice storm uh, issues where if you have an area where you have a lot of trees close to those uh, power lines, uh, it can just create a lot of havoc. So we we have an annual program that goes out, probably similar to Project Trim, where they take five years and make their way around the city. Um, we have an annual program that we trim back uh, uh, trees to make sure that they don't affect our overhead power lines. The only difference is you guys trim actually trim the trees than Project Trim, where we have the citizens trim the trees. That's right, yeah. Thank yeah. you. No, that's fair. I was only referencing uh, the five-year time Fine. period. That's, no. That was a good reference. I appreciate okay. that. Question for you, too, uh, Mark. Tonight's um, consent agenda includes some trucks, bucket truck, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are the bucket trucks, I know that there's several owned across the city, are they controlled by one central fleet operation, or does parks have theirs, public works have theirs, electric light? Do I mean, do everybody own their own? Bucket trucks. Well, I know that um, in recent time, uh, we've we've purchased one that's got a smaller reach and a longer reach, more for light. They are daily trucks that are used. Um, uh, Parks does have their own, and they, I think, even have in some cases a much higher reach. Um, but they are daily trucks. That's not been more of a uh, uh, a fleet asset from a park standpoint uh, yet. Um, but that's certainly something that will likely get discussed with fleet centralization. Uh, just last week, you approved a contract that allowed Mercury to really be, they're the industry leader that will study our fleet, our structure, our equipment utilization, things of that nature. Um, but they are all what I can just share with you. They're daily trucks that are used in electric light. You know, electric light, not only do we have a fairly small territory, of about 2,500 customers, which the big ones are the airport, the event center, um, uh, the National Guard area.
but they also have about the 18,000 street lights that, you know, on a, any given month will replace about three to 400 street light bulbs. So those bucket trucks are often used. Um, and so I can speak today for lights. I can't speak today for parks. Okay. okay. Thank you. Come on, Soda Pop. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on.